I've seen it. And don't tell me that no good Catholic ever committed suicide. I'm telling you that this good Catholic didn't. I've talked to his wife. He was interested in living. Dying just wasn't on his mind. Now, that's hard to tell. He was an Oriental. Oh, Barney, don't give me that inscrutable stuff. Okay. Okay, I'll give you this. I was on the phone to Tokyo this morning. His bank gave me a uh, full disclosure of his expenditures. He was way overextended. Mr. Sato's bank, his friends and his associates were into him for over a million. And I don't mean in yen. Bad, bad? Bad enough here, worse there. That's it. Oh, Sarge. That collar of yours is supporting a very hard head. I wouldn't think it'd be possible for a man in your profession to go around just believing only what he wants to. Barney, supposing it was murder? No way. If I thought there was a chance of it, wouldn't I be pulling this thing apart? Of course. But isn't it all a little bit too neat going in? Ritual suicide and all the trappings. Well, it's still neat. You show me something that says otherwise. One lead, one hard fact that I don't have. Thanks, Barney. I'll see what I can do. Hey, wait, that was not a license! You don't believe it was suicide? No. But I don't make out the death certificate. There are going to be a lot more questions about his health, about his business. His health was good. His business wasn't. And if he left you with a lot of bills? He loved me. A man under pressure doesn't always think clearly. Maybe it was too much for him. Nothing was too much for Kunyashi. Carol, it's one thing to have faith in a man. I've been told, Father, that faith starts at the point beyond what the eyes can see and the ears can hear. Yes. My husband did not kill himself. I know how you feel. Then listen to me. It was not seppuku. Please, Father, try to understand. I've been away so long, I... I feel like such a helpless stranger in my own country. In Japan, we... We have a summer place by the sea. It's beautiful. You must see it someday, Father. I'd like to. You must also see the cemetery nearby. A Catholic cemetery. Our only child lies there. A son. Kunyashi must lie there, too, beside him. As a ritual suicide, he can't be buried there. And for the sake of his immortal soul, please help me prove that he did not take his own life. Oh, Father, help me bury my husband. Mr. Takeichi tells me you wish to inquire about Mr. Kunyashi Sato. Did you know him? Yes. Usually when an important Japanese businessman like Mr. Sato arrives in San Diego, he lets my office know. In the past, we have been of help to Mr. Sato several times. In the past? He didn't call this time. I didn't know he was here until I read about him in the morning newspaper. Sep Foko. Ah, very old tradition, but one that is not approved by the Japanese government. It's not exactly on the Vatican's approved list either. In his earlier visits, did Mr. Sato make any sort of an impression on you? Oh, most assuredly. I found him to be a man of strong will, a man one could trust. He did not give his word lightly. I wonder if you could help me locate some of his business contacts here in San Diego. Oh, nothing could be simpler. I pulled the file when I learned of his most unfortunate death. On his initial visit to San Diego, I personally arranged for him to contact Mr. Sigmund Hess. Mr. Hess imports all manner of items from Japan, including electronic equipment. Mr. Hess will be with you in a moment. Please make yourself comfortable. You mind if I look around? That's what it's for. Uh, Mr. Hess likes to surround himself with beauty. Don't tell me, Miss Arkansas. Close. Uh, with Mississippi. First runner-up. But I won this popularity. Congratulations. I wonder if you could tell me something about a friend of mine, a Mr. Sato. 
Do you happen to know if he visited Mr. Hess in the last couple of days? Sorry, Father. I wasn't hired for my memory. Nice try, though. That's a real beauty. That's called Kabuto. 15th century Japanese. Unfortunately, that's not up your alley, Father, because that's not sacramental. It doesn't matter. I'm afraid it might clash with the rest of the furnishings in St. Aloysius. I take it you're not a buyer. I couldn't afford one of your ashtrays. Well, I have something you might like. This is 20th century American Nixon era five and dime. <laughs> I don't mind browsers. I'm always ready for good company. Come in, let me show you something. Let me show you the pride of my collection. Bonsai. Dwarf tree. Man's victory over nature. It's nice. Nice? It's perfect. I got a hundred more like this at home. Gulliver's Forest. Something tells me you're not a collector either. I had 500 matchbook covers when I was in the fifth grade. I had a thousand. What are you really after, Father? Footprints. I'm following a man that might have come by this way a few days ago, Kuniyashi Sato. I read about him this morning. Poor guy. Must be lousy figuring you have nothing to live for. He did some business with him. Transistor radios. I used to buy them by the boatload. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. The bottom fell out. It happens, who can predict? When did you see Mr. Sato last? A couple of days ago. You might say I am responsible for his death. How do you figure? He asked me for a loan, I turned him down. He had no collateral. He was going under, I hated to see it, but what could I do? You figure that's what pushed him over, the loss of money? Something more important to a Japanese. Loss of face. His wife doesn't think so. No, I'm surprised. I lived in Japan after the war. I know these people, what they're made of, how they feel. A woman respects her husband's decision. Mrs. Sato isn't Japanese. No, and that's the reason why. She thinks her husband was murdered. She wants to think it. The other way, their way, that seems all wrong to her, but if she gets some comfort out of it, what's the difference? You could be right. Sure, what could anyone gain from killing a poor man? Good point. Well, thank you, Mr. Hess. Hope I haven't taken up too much of your time. Hey, we'll have to get together again sometime and trade some old matchbook covers. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I gave all of mine away in the sixth grade. That proves you're not a born collector. I never give anything away. named Samuel Patrick Cavanaugh. That's right, a priest. to see Father Kavanaugh, please. Not here. Back soon. Uh, I'm the parish secretary. Is Father Kavanaugh expecting you? Not exactly. He said I should come here, but he wasn't really expecting me. I'm sorry, that doesn't make sense. I'm Carol Sato. Ah, Sato. Mrs. Sato. Hajimemashite, domo, yoroshiku. Boku wa Kenji Takechi. Yoroshiku dozo, Takechi-san. Please, come in, Mrs. Sato. He should be back any minute. Father Cavanaugh said if I discovered anything new, I should bring it to him here. Now, I found this in the pocket of my husband's suit. May I? Of course. Please sit down. An invoice. I thought your husband was in electronics. He was. 
Well, this is from the Sawyer Ritchie Marine Equipment Company. Did he have a boat? No. Well, then why did he buy $70,000 worth of marine equipment? I don't know. That's what frightens me. I thought I knew my husband so well. One will find out quick. What will? Go we'll see. Now, wait. Maybe you better wait. Size is no time lose. Go we'll see now. Can't you read? There's signs all over the place that say, keep out. You nearly got your tail knocked off. Wish to speak manager, please. We're not open for tourists. You use the same way out. Wish to see manager, please. If you're looking for a job, we're filled. Have business with manager. You want to buy something? No. Then beat it before you get hurt. Tell me, please, where is manager? You were just talking to him. you to get out of here. What's the matter? Don't you speak English? Yes. Then get out! No. Paper say you sell to Kuniyashi Saito. Where'd you get that? Belongs to a widow lady. Give me that invoice. No. Hand it over. <laughs> What did you sell to Kuniyashi Seto? Fact. He made a deposit, that's all. He never came up with the rest of the bread. He was a deadbeat. The order never went through. Order for what? Oh, stuff. What stuff, please? Stop. Salvage gear. Thank you. Stop him! Don't let him out! be ashamed of yourself, picking on all those guys. Don't you remember anything I taught you? Turn other cheek. Yeah, your other cheek, not the guy that you're fighting. Especially if you're gonna turn it with your foot. Anyway, thanks, Kenji. Anytime. What you found out could be important. Sato tries to buy a whole bunch of salvage gear. Okay. Why does the company want to keep it a secret? Big mystery. It's a big headache. Japanese businessman who can't pay his bills suddenly switches from transistor radios to marine equipment. And he gets himself murdered. Or maybe we don't understand it because we don't know enough about Mr. Sato. Like what? Like what did he do during the war? He was in the Navy. Battleship or carrier or... He was in command of a submarine. It sank. He was blamed for the loss of his ship. It 
was a terrible disgrace for him. He could hardly bring himself to tell me about it. Have you heard of Bushido? The samurai rule book? He was of a samurai family, nobility. There was only one way to deal with that disgrace. Seppuku. If every military man killed himself each time he made a mistake, the Pentagon would be empty. Oh, my husband made no mistake. The submarine was defective. The log would have proved that, but it lies buried beneath the sea with the bodies of 12 men. There were many times when my husband wished that he had died with them. Do you know where the sub went down? Off the coast of Baja, California. Would he have had any reason to want to get back to the sub? Well, he always felt that the logbook would have cleared him. Ah. And the logbooks were usually kept in waterproof containers. I suppose they could have lasted this long. I woke up one night, and he wasn't beside me. I found him in the other room studying ocean charts. Said it was restful for him, when he couldn't sleep, to trace old voyages. This was in Tokyo? No, it was here, in the hotel the night before he was killed. There were no charts among his effects? Why do you kill a poor man? But even if it was true, if, if he was obsessed with finding the old sub and diving for the logbook, why would anyone else be interested in a sunken Japanese submarine? It doesn't make sense to me that he was killed because of that. It's too absurd. But he's dead. Kunyashi is dead. That doesn't make sense to me either. Priest, huh? Right. Why well, ain't you at least a cardinal? You gotta make Monsignor first. I'm still a buck private in this outfit. Didn't I tell you go Greek Orthodox? Uh... <laughs> you should see me in a beard. I look like Santa Claus. Saint Nick. Now there's a good Greek name. Now wait a minute, son. Before you say, Andy, how you been? I know you didn't come all the way down here just to inquire about my health. It ain't too bad, by the way. No, I can see that. Andy, I got a problem. Ha! And you want my help, right? Right. Okay, what is it this time? You want me to call numbers at a bingo game, right? No. Sawyer Ritchie, you do a lot of business with that outfit? When the price is right. A fathometer? <laughs> What for? Well, I've been thinking of hiring out for deep sea fishing. It's the only way to find the big ones these days. <laughs> Who's gonna rent this old tub? Hey, listen, she's got plenty of knots left in her yet. Don't, don't kid yourself. <laughs> that place interests you, Sawyer Ritchie? Well, sort of. You know the manager? Falco? That scum, I wouldn't wipe my feet on him. Is it your interest? No. A man named Kuniyashi Sato. He was murdered. Look, you've got a pipeline. What does the waterfront say about it? Nothing. I never heard of it. Andy, this isn't a social visit. Will you ask around for me? I'll keep my ears open just for you, Sarge. Just for you. Thanks, Andy. Hey, one of these days we got to get together for a big fish, though, OK? Like in the old days, remember? With lots of wine. Yeah. Hey, we had some good times, you and me. Yeah, we sure did. Hey, remember that girl in Honolulu? You know, the hot number with the most fancy... No, you wouldn't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> what am I talking I'll about? I'll see you, Andy. Okay. <laughs>
don't scream. I'm not going to hurt you. Who are you? You wake up, you find a man in your room, you want to know who he is? What are you doing here? What do you want? That's more like it. What? Not who. Like, what am I going to do to you? Well, this is nice stuff. Japanese silk. It's made from little worms. Put it on, honey. Is that better? Safer? Get out of my room. When I'm ready. That wasn't very bright. They'll send someone up to fix it. Not before morning. Watch that first step, lady. It's ten floors. What do you want? Money, jewelry. You're out of luck. I don't have any. You think I'm a burglar? Or is that what you hope? I could be something worse, you know. Miss Sato, what are you afraid of besides American men? Oh. oh, Japs are different, eh? You don't have to tell me I was there after the war. You know how many islands I helped clear out before the surrender? How many Japs I killed? What are you talking about? The enemy! The war is over! That's right! Now we're in business together. Now I make my living off them. And I don't have to love them. That's your specialty, isn't it? Oh. Your husband was a submarine commander. Do you know how many American ships he sank? How many American lives he took? How could you bear to live with him? How could you bear to have him touch you? Stop it! Stop it! Why don't you try one of your own kind? You might learn to like it. <laughs> You'll have to get somebody else to teach you. I came to give you a present. Take it. Airlines ticket. One way to Tokyo. You're booked for the morning flight. I can't go now. I'll have a man here to drive you to the airport. I couldn't go yet. Lady, you can't stay. After you're gone, I'll, I'll get out. I'll call the police. No, you're not going to call the police. And I'm going to tell you why. My pop used to make the best cherry Danish in the whole world. I tried the same recipe, and what comes out of the oven isn't even fit to eat. Well, it must be the cherries. You want to try one? No, and I'm not sorry to say I've already had breakfast. Now, do you want to hear my theory? Oh, it's too early in the morning for theories. Sato was killed for some charts showing the position of a sunken Japanese submarine. Now, I know the charts are gone. Mrs. Sato looked through the hotel room. The maid threw them out. She thought they were scrap paper, and you know what? I think she was right. Yeah, I know. A hunk of iron at the bottom of the Pacific. It's a lousy motive. That's a good word for it. I didn't say it made sense. I said that the charts are gone. I'll tell you what. An international spy picked them up because he thought they were top secret documents. They must have had some value to somebody. Otherwise, why did they kill Sato and make it look like sepulchre? That's easy. They didn't. Sato tries to borrow some money from Hess. Negative. So he tries to buy some salvage equipment on credit. Again, negative. So, he killed himself. At least that worked. Look, Barney, here was a man obsessed with one idea. How to get back to a sunken submarine. That's it, huh? I'm going with Mrs. Sato to the Navy Library this morning to see what we can find out about her husband's sunken sub. Maybe I'll come up with something else. Well, have a good day, Sarge. That'll be the cherries. Maybe next time I'll use prunes. At least with a prune, you know where you stand. I guess that's the last one. You moving to a new hotel? No. You're going somewhere. Back to Tokyo. May I ask why? I haven't time to discuss it, Father. I'll miss my plane. There are other planes. I have to be on this one. Well, I told that boy to take the luggage down. Now, what's the matter with you? You asked for my help. 
I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And what about your husband? Is he going back, too? Please, Father, let me go. I recall some brave and noble sentiments about your husband's immortal soul. I'm disappointed. What do you want to run out now for? I'm not. Then what do you call it? He said they'd kill you if I didn't go. <laughs> Who said? He wouldn't tell me his name. He broke into my room last night. Describe him. Well, average height, dark hair, sort of balding. If it helps, he said he does business with Japanese. Japs, he said. It helps. I think I know the man. Now, we can have him picked up if you want. Oh, not for that. It would be my word against his. The police already have me written off as an hysterical widow. Oh, Father. Are you scared? Well, I was. Mostly of the idea of going back to Japan without my husband. Of going back at all. Why did that terrify me? Come on. I'll have the boy bring your bags to my car. Well, where are we going? The rectory. Hotels are too accessible. Anyway, the company's better. Oh, now, wait a minute, Sarge. Hold it. Back up. You're going too far ahead of me. Somebody tried to scare Mrs. Sato, the suicide's wife, out of town? Right, except that I don't buy that suicide business. I've got her here at the rectory for safekeeping. Well, assuming that you're right, do you have any idea who did kill him? Yeah, I can't say for sure. Barney, there is something that you can do for me. Would you trace the airline's ticket that he bought for her? I'll send it on over and you can have somebody work on it. Thanks. I don't have enough to do. A couple of unsolved murders, a uh, sex maniac or two, and somebody swiped the hubcaps off my car. But I'll do everything I can for you, Sarge. As long as I'm not doing anything else. OK, thanks. Kenji, I got a job for you. Go back warehouse? No, don't go back to the warehouse. I want you to take this ticket over to Barney Varick's office. Big hurry? Big hurry. And I want you to get back here as fast as you can, but don't kill anybody. As long as Mrs. Sato is a guest upstairs, I want you close to the rectory. Keep everybody out. All right, keep everybody out. But don't overdo it. If the postman comes to the door, don't throw him over your shoulder. Just make sure it's the postman, OK? OK. OK, take that to Barney and get back as fast as you can. Sleep a wink last night. She's been through an awful lot. When she does go home, she's taking her husband to be buried in that churchyard. Right. Get tough. Tough. Only don't forget about Father Brannigan. Father Brannigan? You forgot about Father Brannigan. You were supposed to meet him in the church to talk about a special mass for the deaf. Did you forget that, too? Of course not. Think I'm getting old or something? Shh. Keep an eye on her. Both eyes. Main thing are the hands, Sam. I want your congregation to be able to see all the movements. A beautiful sight. If you were thinking of a spotlight, I was thinking... Uh, sorry, Sam, I can't see your lips. Haven't you learned to read through the back of my head yet? No, I'm working on it. Let's see what else. Oh, I've arranged for a bus to bring you people over here for well, the rehearsal. I hope you've arranged for somebody to pay for it. I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, I never doubted you'd make a good parish priest. Well, I had a few moments. I had no reason why a cop couldn't make it. You had two good ears, and that's two more than I had. Yeah. Yours are attached to a pretty good head. You know, this is a great idea. Mass for the deaf. Well, we've had a jazz mass and a rock mass. Folk mass? Why not a silent mass? Well, nobody up there can't say we're trying. I'll bet you a cup of coffee you can't read Kenji's lips. I'm afraid I'll have to wait till after confession. Yours or mine? One of your parishioners just ducked into the confessional. Get to work, Sam. I'll see you later. Father, I'm 
here. It's a long time since my last confession. A real long time. But, like they say, it's never too late, right? It's never too late. I almost forgot how to do it. Have you sinned? <laughs> Man, have I sinned? It would take me a week to tell you. But uh, that's not why I'm here. It's something else, something special. Yes. Be the granddaddy of all sins. Only it's one I ain't committed yet. Have you thought about it? That's a sin too, right? Why don't you tell me about it? That's why I'm here. This, uh, this sin I'm thinking of committing. What am I talking about? I ain't thinking. Man, I gotta do it. I got a contract. To do what? To kill a priest. A priest who won't stay away from where he don't belong. Twice in two days. It's too much. This calls for wine. Don't mind the wine. Tell me about your visitor. What visitor? Oh, you mean Mr. Hess? You want to charter my tug? What for? You could buy a yacht. It's my feelings exactly. It's too fishy. How do I even know it's legal what he wants it for? That never bothered you before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like any old shrimp dredging days off of Florida. A little gun running or cigar smuggling and sweet in the pot. Well, that's what I mean. With my background, I gotta be careful who I do business with. I, I can't afford to lose this tug. I, I gotta play it straight. Then why not? I got all the work I can use, and it's legitimate. Like me, like Andy Miklas. So you turned him down? Cold. And if he offered you some more money? I'll spit in his eye, okay with you? <laughs> yes, it's okay with me. <laughs> and now what I came for. What have you learned about Mr. Sato? He's a man of mystery. He came, he went, people saw him, but they, they don't know what he was after. I'm sorry, it looks like I drew a blank, Sergeant. Don't be sorry, you tried him. Thank you. Hey, don't be such a stranger. Come back some night and we'll talk about the good old days. Okay. Okay? I'll keep it clean. <laughs> Sarge, Sorry, isn't this usually the time of year that you go into retreat? Who bought the airline tickets for me? Credit card issued to the Yama Corporation. Which is? It's a conglomerate among which it owns the Sawyer Ritchie Marine Equipment Company. Something I thought you might be interested in. All right, who's behind it? Who's the man? Sigmund Hess? Yeah. Yeah, Hess. And as far as I'm concerned, he's a legitimate businessman. Mrs. Sato could paint you a different picture of him. But I got something for you first. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Vic. Barney Varick, Lieutenant Commander Vic Callan, United States Navy. Hello, Commander. He's got something to show you. I have some pictures here. The class sub that Kuniyashi Sato commanded during the war. Here's one. He was something of a naval hero, by the way, until his disgrace. What happened? Oh, he abandoned ship with only part of the crew. He left 12 men aboard. The Japanese wartime board of inquiry blamed poor navigation for the accident. Sato blamed the sub. He said it was faulty construction. He could have been right. They built them fast in those days. Yeah, those are very nice pictures. That was my favorite war. Now, patience, Barney. Sato was heavily in debt, huh? And I said that he wanted to determine the location of that sub. His wife said it was for a logbook that would vindicate him. I thought it was for salvage. And both you and I thought I was crazy. Who'd want an old tin can like that? I still think so. Uh-huh. Vic, you want to set him straight? 
Toward the end of the war, Japan, like Germany, ran into some shortages of strategic materials, including lead. Well, since lead was used for ballast on submarines, they had to substitute. They picked something cheap and plentiful. Mercury. In steel cylinders. Barney, we're talking about 200 tons of mercury. At today's market value, that's about what? One and a half? More like two. Two million dollars. Two million dollars worth of mercury? In a sunken sub off Baja, California. Sato had the charts, but he didn't have the financing. So he went to Hess. Hess listened and he liked what he heard. But he figured he needed the charts, but he didn't need Sato. And the Shinto Shrine. Hess has all of those things in stock. Swords, robes, everything that's needed for a phony ritual suicide. Only he didn't know that Sato was a Catholic. And if that's not enough for you, Barney, today Hess tried to hire a salvage tug. By now he's probably got one. Those cylinders crack while they're trying to get them up. We'll have an ecological disaster on our hands. 200 tons of pure mercury dumped into the ocean. I'll have Hess picked up. That is, if he isn't already out at sea. There's a cutter stationed at the breakwater. Helicopters? Whatever you need. Give me the harbor master. Come on, speed it up, get it in. Take this load to the tug, get it on board, and take a crew with you. Jump in, close the door. Suspicion of murder. Sato, he was a Jap. I killed a hundred Japs during the war. What's one more? Come on, Hess, let's go. I didn't even have a chance to aim. You better search for the charts. What if we can't find them? Only Sato and Hess knew where to look for that sub, and they're both dead. You know what a lousy shot I am? You're the lousiest. You didn't mean to kill him. I want you to drive very carefully on the way to the airport. You've got a lot of time before a plane leaves. I always drive careful. Well, let's put it this way. I don't want her to fly before she has to. You got it? Got it. Was there any word? They didn't find the charts. Barney said they looked everywhere. And the submarine is lost, too. Do you think there might have been a log book? What do you think? Oh, yeah. I'm very grateful to you, Father. Are you still scared? About going back alone? I won't be alone. The terror was in me. It's not me. Only good friends. Sure. I'm going home. Hey, don't forget this. Oh, well, thanks for everything. Have a good flight. Sayonara. Sayonara. Oh, 
Did you forget? No, I didn't forget, Father Brennan. I thought you were going to spit in his eye. For that kind of money. Was it easier to kill me? I got the charts. Hess left them with me. I had them all the time. Now Hess is dead, and I'm the only one knows where the sub is. A sub full of mercury, $2 million worth of quicksilver, and I can't get at it because of you. That new fathometer wasn't to salvage big fish. It was for big salvage. You've been working for him all the time. And the minute I pull anchor, you're going to think of that. You're going to send them after me, and you're going to louse me up, and I've been sitting in that tug going nuts! All that salvage, and I can't get at it because of you. And that's why I was looking to kill you. It wasn't anything personal. I'd kill anybody for two million bucks. I believe you, Andy. All right, now back up. 